What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Wet Dreams Outdoors. I'm Quentin. So, uh, last night we went, uh, me and the boys went out on a bow fishing trip. We managed to get about, I think we got 16 snakehead. I didn't see some really nice ones. Unfortunately, I had some issues with my GoPro. I did not get to film any of that, but I did just do a little short recap that you guys hopefully have already seen. So, today what I'm going to show you is how I actually prep and clean these fish for eating. Although everyone thinks they're kind of gross, they are slimy, they're a little bit messy. They are absolutely delicious to cook. They're very firm meat, so just all sorts of different recipes you can use for them. So we're gonna get cleaning these. What I'm gonna use is I got a Bubba with a nine inch stiff flame, or uh, butcher blade, sorry. So I'm gonna primarily use this just to separate the meat from the skin. And me personally, I like to have a small knife, a little four inch Rapala. This thing has probably cleaned a couple hundred fish over the years. I like to use it just for the tedious work. I like to be able to get in there and really work around the bones really easily. This allows me to do that. There are some other ways you can clean these. You could just use that and just go straight down, straight across. Might do that. I'm not sure. Might try it. It's been a little while since I did with these fish. I know they have some thin bones. And I know their bones run far back on their body. Personally, I prefer the little knife. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right, but what I like to do is I would like to start off with rinsing fish off. They are slimy. This guy was hit back here, so we're probably going to have to cut that section out and throw it away just because I don't like having the wound in the meat. It does get a little bloodshot, gets a little gamey, but additionally to that, it's exposed to all that bacteria, so I like to tend to, I tend to cut all that out. So with snakehead, you are not legally allowed to transport them alive, especially not into other states from where they're harvested or other waterways. So, yeah, I'll check out my fingers and his gills. Well, that's a problem. Ooh, choo, 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 choo. Ooh that's sharp. Watch doing that. Those are serrated. So, anyway, uh, what I like to do whenever I clean the, or catch these fish, I take my pocket knife that I do not have on me and I put it right in here and I use a bat or a piece of wood and smack it down. What that does is it severs the spine and pretty much puts the fish down right then and there. It's our beautiful fish. So electric blade, that's going to be what I use to actually separate the meat from the skin. I like to use a small knife. As I said, I, get, I can get a little bit better work with it. So go up into here there are some pin bones going to here they come out like this so sometimes you catch them whenever you do go down even at this angle there's some meat up here but unfortunately you tend to have to lose it hold them down run your knife right down those fins try not to go through them if you can there we go should just kind of glide down effortlessly and go back to the tail like to do then is I miss a meat here. I didn't hold the right angle, but we'll get it on the next round. We got a lot of these fish to go, so not that big of a deal. Get your knife down in here, get into those ribs. We can actually salvage that meat right like that. And we're gonna separate this. We're gonna take the knife. It's not much meat there, but I did miss a little, so we'll take that out. At least a little bite there that out, toss out any nice water, Get, helps keep it fresh, it is a little warm out here today. What I like to try to do, it's a little harder with the camera on, but uh, hold the meat out, right, let your knife run right down along those ribs like you would any other fish. Right there's those bones I said about, they're gonna go out, hear them there, Let's see if we can get down around them right there, it's probably not, it's really not much down here. Get too low, you're gonna hit the stomach cavity. So, with snakehead, they do their rib bones run the whole way. You can probably hear them there. Back to about here. That should be right, yeah, right there's where they end. So, let your knife kind of run down along them. They do the work for you. Once you get about here, I just like pushing my knife through, run it down to the tail, keep a hold of it, bring it up through, and come back down right there so 
Should leave most of the bones on there. I do, there's those pin bones right here. I think I actually managed to leave all of them on the fish. And check just by quick feel. I actually did not leave them all on the fish. They're right there. There's one more right there. If we get a hold of that. Right there, it goes up and down. So right there it is. I threw that right into my fish barrel that I didn't dump out yet. Then what I like to do, pull, oh, oh, too much of a pull. So because I did that, if you ever do this and you need something to hold on to, take your knife, cut yourself a little hole, and use that to get your finger in. I have big fingers, so I gotta cut that a little bit bigger. They are slimy, so that's the reason why you need something to hold on to. So I'm gonna have to make that even bigger yet. Okay. So, give yourself something to hold on to. It is worse than a wet bar of soap. Pinch. Take a knife, put it down. Drag it straight up across. And the reveal left nothing on here. Perfect. Go in the scrap bin. I'm going to cut this off. That is scar tissue. On there and basically now what i'm going to do so we got that there but i don't want to get rid of that quite yet because we can do some cleanup work here real quick that will save us a little bit of headache and a little bit of time later versus dealing with multiple pieces so right here there is a section of pin bones around right about there what i like to do because this is the mud vein i am going to take my knife i'm going to get into those pin bones they do kind of run at an angle I'm gonna, and once I get past them, I'm gonna follow that mud vein. Well, you gotta try to hold the meat still. And go the whole way down. Back here, that is from the tail. And that little fin. It's just little tiny chunks of meat. Nothing you do really do with it. It's odd texture, honestly. Come back up here, continue to run that knife down those pin bones. All right, now this is one boneless piece. I'm gonna set that there, that does need cleaned. We're gonna come back up here, hold your meat firm. Run that knife down. Find those pin bones right there. That's actually one of the front pin bones, how it's sticking back further. Gives that one away. Come down, run your knife down. And right there, that is the pin bones. You listen, you can hear them. They're not big, but they are in there. Right there, you really hear them. So, get those out of there. Nobody likes to bite into a bone. Right there, that is a parasite. So we are gonna cut that out. Some people like to leave them. I personally do not. I typically try to get them out of there, whatever angle tends to leave the, or most meat on the fly. I don't like to waste a lot. I'm gonna trim this little layer of fat off up here. Fat is where a lot of your heavy metals like to lay. Uh, I'll try to get that out of there. Not that these fish really have a lot of them. I haven't seen any health advisories on these fish, but I know there are some for the that waterway. So I'll get that out of there. Looks like we got another parasite up there. It's a dark spot. Sometimes when they're alive, there'll be white spots. I believe these ones are dead. This is the arrow hole. So I'm gonna go above it and below it. That's just because I don't want any of that contaminated meat getting in anything. So, slimy, even the meat's slimy whenever you get to this point. That is one boneless filet. And we're gonna take the rest of that mud vein out. I did kind of get ahead of myself there. So, let's take your knife, right along that lateral line. Go the whole way down through. There are no bones back here, so you don't have to worry. Get rid of that. That's gonna give you a better tasting finished product. This is a smaller fish, so not quite a grilling sized fish, but you definitely pan fry that if you want, or cut into little nuggets and fry it, which is really good if you like uh, kind of like cubed fish and breaded. Right there's a parasite. We're going to cut that one out. You see that one came out real nice and easy. Not a lot of waste. Trim off some of this little garbage here that I got going on. I'm going to get that parasite out right here. <coughs> so hopefully you guys can see that. Right there, see a little line? Let's see if we can get this out and show you. 
I'm end up cutting this anyway, but we're right there. So that is, there's actually two in that same spot. I can't get this one opened up, but they're basically like a little worm. Get them out of there. As far as I know, everyone, everything I read, these parasites are not infectious to humans, but I don't care. I don't want, like the look of them in my meat. I don't want to give this away to somebody and somebody see a parasite in the meat I gave them. So there's one more right there. Let's see if I can not cut myself. This meat being firm is actually kind of nice for this because it allows you to cut them out very easily. Now that piece, I do not see any more dark spots in there. That there is just old scale. We're good. Okay, so now this one here, I can see there's two right here. We're gonna cut them out. Throw that piece away. We're gonna cut this wound out. Throw that piece away. Right here, you can see there's scar tissue from where one of those parasites used to be. Let's trim that off real lightly. I am probably way pickier with my fish than most people. Uh, I take, I mean, it doesn't look like anything special, but I know these, these smaller fish are getting cubed up. So I'm not too worried about them looking very fancy and presentable. On bigger fish, I will get a little bit more particular with it and try to give it a better presentation. So now just because I like to try to get some of that slime off them before I put them in the bucket, push the big pieces off, chuck them in ice water. These fish were sitting on ice, so they're good. So I'm going to rinse this one off, see the scales there, and parasites. The nice thing with whenever you rinse them off like this is it allows you, especially if you're using your hand to get the slime and dirt off them or scales, it allows you to feel if there's any bones, if you missed anything, and that can occur. Okay, so that is how I clean a snakehead. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment. I hope you like, and I hope you sub subscribe for more videos like this. If you want to see more cleaning these fish, let me know. If you want to see us do a catch and cook, let me know. I probably will do an episode of just how we cook these and just a couple recipes that we like to try with these. These are a delicious fish. If you never got to try them, I strongly recommend it. If you never got to catch them, you can rod and reel fishies just like you do bass. If you want to bow fish them, get out there, sling some arrows, get some fish. God bless y'all. Thank you for watching.